Hey, good afternoon. We uh, certainly want to thank everybody for being here. We uh, certainly got some, some great news that uh, we want the community to know about, but we also, what's most important is for us to showcase the folks that are behind us that work so hard on something that doesn't get a lot of attention. Uh, we have several investigators with our Criminal Investigation Division, uh, specifically investigators with our Cold Case Unit. So we have revamped uh, in the last year our Cold Case Unit, and Jason Cox is in charge of that, who is an investigator here. And we also have cases assigned to each homicide investigator um, within our Criminal Investigations Division. So you'll hear a little bit about that today. We want to announce the arrest of three people. Uh, they've been, uh, these three arrests have been made in reference to a cold case of Marquel Hellams from 2014. In an effort to provide uh, a little bit of background on the case, deputies were called to a gravel path off of Davis Road in Piedmont, February 1st, 2014, after a gentleman walking his dog located a body that appeared deceased. Once deputies arrived, they discovered the body of the 19-year-old Marquel Hellams. He had suffered multiple gunshot wounds. Ultimately, due to a lack of evidence, the case went cold and unsolved for roughly seven years. As of April the 15th, members of the Sheriff's Office facet team, along with deputies at the Pickens County Sheriff's Office, have taken into custody three individuals responsible for his death. 46-year-old Chris Thomas Capitino is charged with murder and criminal conspiracy. 26-year-old Destiny Maria Fields is charged with murder and criminal conspiracy. 28-year-old Raheem Gerard Griffin is charged with murder and criminal conspiracy and possession of a weapon during a violent crime. All three of these suspects are housed now at the Greenville County Detention Center next door. Recently, and now their third uh, solved cold case since August of 2020, investigators were able to utilize advancements in technology. They were able to put the defendants at the scene of the crime. Um, we mentioned their names and we'll release a packet to you with their information here shortly, I'm sure, from Lieutenant Flood. In addition, at least one person has come forward through Crime Stoppers with information that has corroborated the available forensic evidence and also pointed investigators to the location of the vehicle that was used by the suspects during this crime. The vehicle was located in Pickens County on April the 9th of this year and is currently being processed. So we have that vehicle. Since reviewing this case, our investigators have learned that on January the 31st, Griffin, Fields, and the victim, who were roommates, met up with Capitino under the victim's uh, presumption that they were going to make a, a narcotics purchase. We believe that there had been previous conflicts between Helms and his roommates, which investigators believe motivated this tragic death. On January the 31st, 2014, the roommates, including Helms, met up with Capitino and got in his vehicle, at which time Capitino drove to Piedmont and ended up near the area of Davis Road. Where the defendants carried out the act, they conspired to commit and fatally shot the victim outside of the vehicle. All three of the defendants, again, are currently housed at Greenville County Detention Center on Novon. Um, if there's anything I can talk to you about today or address about this particular case of the cold case unit, I'll be glad to. Um, again, our, our intention here is to put fresh eyes on these cases. Uh, we have about 100 cold cases uh, that we're working on, and, and we're trying to methodically take those one by one and assign them to the individuals you see behind me today. These are the men and women that put in the work. Uh, these are the men and women who want answers for these families. So all the credit goes to them. Uh, this is a very uh, tedious process for sure when you talk about reviewing case files that are just boxes of information and then re-interviewing witnesses and trying to, uh, trying to piece those things together. So I think uh, these cases have been sitting for long enough and we want answers for the family. We certainly want to bring some peace and resolution to them. Uh, we have a long way to go. Again, we're right about 96, right close to 100 uh, active cold cases at this time. So, any questions? Yes, Sheriff, when did y'all get that Crime Stoppers tip? When? I'm not sure the actual date. Uh, it has been within the last year when they opened up this case to start reviewing it. And you bring up an excellent point. If anybody has any information, we're not just working on homicides. 
uh, our death investigations, we're working on missing persons, and we have a number of them. So these families deserve answers, and we're going to make sure they get them. If you have any information, we would ask you to call 23CRIME, or you can call our non-emergency number here at 271-5210. But Crime Stoppers of Greenville does a tremendous job, uh, not only helping us, getting us information, but offering a reward. Um, and we can't thank, uh, thank that group enough for the Board of Crime Stoppers and what they do for us here in law enforcement in upstate. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Well, I think the most important thing is to look at their eagerness to, to solve something. If you look at our homicide division and the work they do, and, you know, obviously if something happened today, we're looking for a suspect right away and we start generating information. Those are good cases and they do a tremendous job at that for sure. And we have a, we have a lot of them, a lot of moving parts and pieces when you talk about the solicitor's office and having to work with them, um, having to interview witnesses and work in neighborhoods. They do a great job. But what they do exceptionally well is take on a challenge. Uh, not only the challenges inside the sheriff's office, they have nothing to do with homicide cases, uh, but I think they're very well prepared. When they look at these cold cases and they dig into them, uh, they, they put a lot of work into it. And I think it speaks volumes having three of these solved in just really, really about seven or eight months. Um, speaks volumes to the job they do. And uh, Investigator Cox has certainly shown a lot of leadership. He's taken on that role of the cold case unit and, and really being the go-to guy uh, for anybody who volunteers to take one of these cases. And we've had a lot of investigators behind me say, hey, give me one of those cases, let me look at it. And, uh, and I think, it, again, I think it speaks well of the type of individuals we have working here. And, uh, and kudos to Investigator Cox who's on the end there. He's done a tremendous job. So. Sure. Can you kind of talk about this uh, new technology that you mentioned that help, you know, give these extra leads and, and evidence in this case? A lot of it is DNA, uh, touch DNA. It's quite expensive, and it takes a while when we send that stuff off to get something back. Uh, a lot of families get frustrated when you when they want some resolution, even if it's a fresh case, a, a, a recently occurred case. Uh, a lot of times we still have to wait on that information to come back. We got several active cases that we're waiting on DNA and forensics to come back. Uh, but most of that is DNA related, it's, it's scientific, it's touch DNA that makes a huge difference in putting somebody at the scene of a crime when it occurs. Is touch DNA like fingerprints? Yes. Anything you leave on a weapon or at a crime scene, uh, that's what we refer to. Um, Sheriff, can you talk a little bit more about the conflict between Helms and his roommate or roommate? We don't know. Uh, again, that's, you know, you, you're looking at a from an investigative standpoint, the interviews they've had, that'll, that'll kind of be safe for the court case. Uh, we don't want to give out too much information about what their statements were and who talked about what uh, when you talk about those three together. Uh, I'm sure they're over there watching this now and probably talking to each other about it, but, but they're watching it from inside the detention center. They're not out here anymore. So. Uh, Sheriff, uh, with this uh, new technology, and you guys have solved you know, three cold cases so far this year, does this renew the hope to you and, and to the victims' families that, that these cases can be solved? I hope so. I'd be disappointed if it didn't. Um, I mean, you know, anytime you get some results from something you put so much work into, I think that's very positive. Uh, and the family knows where we are. Obviously, we would talk to them before we talked to the media or made any announcements. Uh, but we do have to keep some of that stuff kind of close to the vest. It's, it's social media, and people do talk a lot. but. Uh, but the family's been very cooperative, and I think they were very excited to see some resolution in this case, uh, in particular, as well as the other two. You know, there's, uh, you know, we're the spokesman for the victims, um, and, and we have to do everything in our power to make sure we do what we're supposed to do. The public trusts us to do their job, and that's what we're going to do at the Greenville County Sheriff's Office, and we're going to do it the best of our ability. We got great people, and that makes a difference. Sure. Yes, ma'am. Do you have a message for the families of victims whose cases might have gone cold? Just know we're working on it. I mean, I think, uh, I think that's the best information we can give them. We're certainly not going to give up on, on anything uh, that we're required to investigate or asked to investigate. And there's always hope. You know, as long as there's somebody willing to talk to us, there's some evidence, there's some technology that we can use, these cases are being looked at. This is not, they're not just packed away in a box and stuck in a closet. 
Uh, if you don't believe it, you can ask investigator cops. You can look in his office, and uh, there's cases, you know, there's plenty of them to be worked on, unfortunately, and we're going to do everything in our power to solve them. We will, we will never just pack those cases away and tell you we've done all we can do. Carrie? Absolutely. Even if you think it's something we already have or something that may may not seem very important to you, uh, if you remember anything about it, by all means, call and tell us. Those are all pieces of the puzzle to put this thing together to bring some resolution to where we are today. So, no, that's extremely important. Uh, there's nothing that, that we don't want to know about. If it's irrelevant, uh, let us decide that. Uh, but by all means, call and, and let us know and get involved. And that's how these things are solved with our community. Uh, they do great work. They'll follow up on leads, but to get those leads, we have to get it from you, uh, the public. And, uh, and we, we ask you for your help on any case that you know about. Again, not just a homicide, but a missing persons case. Um, I don't know the exact number. We have 11 or 12 missing persons that are, that are unanswered. We don't know where they are. Um, and, you know, check out our Facebook page. Jason, make sure that stuff is on there. Uh, our website, we're going to start putting our missing persons, our unsolved cases on there uh, to hopefully kind of reignite people's memory a little bit. And if they got something to offer, we hope they call us. What's the yes, oldest cold case or missing persons case? I think it's from 1968, I think. Is that right? Um, and I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it. I don't have it with me, but, but there is one that old in there. We also have uh, the Mr. X case which is a, um, it's a homicide. I think it's from 1972, 74, 1972. He's unidentified. Uh, his body has been exhumed. Um, and there, there was not a lot of remains to be quite honest, but they are working on that case as well, as far as trying to find something to test for DNA and working with different agencies outside the state to try to identify him. Um, but that would be the next one that we know of. Um, Brad Willis actually is, is doing a podcast, I think, on that case. So we tried to help him give him some information. And, and it's, um, it's, it's been good, to be honest. A lot of people listen to those and have information or may remember when that case happened and have called and come forward and gave us some information. Uh, we don't have a name yet, obviously. But, uh, but again, I think if we get it out there, people, people have information. They just think it might not be important. Is that it? Well, thank you all so much for being here. We appreciate it. Let's give these guys a hand. This is where it's at. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. Still got me on uh, podium incarceration. <laughs>